Hello, my friends. It's time once again for me to, to babble on about something that interests me, and that is the U.S. Army field jacket. I'm actually getting ready to go out and do some digging at one of my local honey holes to, to find good vintage jackets like this Lee jacket that I found just recently. And But it fits me, so I'm keeping this one. But anyway, uh, before I go out and do some digging, I wanted to talk about uh, U.S. Army or U.S. military but mostly U.S. Army issued field jackets. Now understand, uh, there are basically four different types, and I'll go over those four types. But the first one is what's known as the M19 or M1941 or the M41 field jacket. I don't have an example of that because number one, it's pretty rare. They were very, very lightweight. They were considered more of a windbreaker than anything. They weren't very practical. The only pockets they had were like two hand warmer pockets like this Lee jacket, but no other pockets whatsoever. It had exposed buttons down the front. And like I said, it was really considered more of a wind breaker than anything. It wasn't practi uh, practical for the European theater at all. It had a real thin poplin material. The inside was uh, wool, but it was a real thin wool. So it was basically better suited for the Pacific theater than it was for the European theater at all because it got so cold in Europe. So that was pretty much phased out. We had it from 1940 to, to, to about 1945 or so, and then it was replaced with the M1943 field jacket. So the, M, the M41, 1940 to 1945-ish. The M43 or M1943, was uh, in use from 1943 to about 1950. The difference, and I have an example, M1943, is that they made four pockets, but the pockets were buttons. So you could see on this one that it takes buttons, and there's actually this funky little tab underneath uh, the flap of the pocket on all four of them where you would button it in. The buttons are big. They're a lot bigger than what you'll see on more modern field jackets. They had the button sleeves. You could actually add a liner and, and put it on the inside. Uh, it had a detachable hood that you could put on or take off uh, when you needed it. Most, most troops in combat never wore a hood because it blocked your ears. I mean, you couldn't hear the enemy sneaking up on you or something like that. So maybe you would wear the hood in the rear with the gear or what have you, but you would never uh, wear that hood out front. If you're in a defensive position like in a foxhole, uh, and I think maybe if you weren't actually listening for the enemy, you would probably uh, wear it. But most of the time, the hood wasn't worn on field jackets. Even in the modern field jackets, it's just not even really worn. But that is the M1943, <coughs> excuse me, that went from 1943 to 1950, that replaced the M1941, and it was a lot more practical. At the same time, and just to kind of add some more information to this, at the same time, General Eisenhower had his wool dress jacket, but the wool dress jacket was actually longer it was made more for dress wear, not for the field, but he wanted something to be made out of wool to be worn as an additional layer underneath this field jacket. So he got with his tailor and, and took the dress uniform, the dress wool uniform, and had it uh, tailored down to, to be worn right on the waist, kind of like this jacket here. And that's how it became known as the Ike jacket. Now, initially, his idea was to have another layer to wear underneath the field jacket. But this jacket actually was so popular, the way he designed it, or had his tailor design it, it became official, officially worn uniform, but it turned into a dress uniform, not really a field uniform. Even though some officers wore it uh, out in the field, and even some soldiers wore it out in the field, but it was it really kind of uh, evolved into a dress Class A or Class B jacket to be worn in parades and things of that nature. So that is the Ike jacket. A 
eventually the M1943 was replaced with the M1951. This is your M1951 field jacket. Now what's the difference between the M1951 and the M1943 was they added a zipper. There is not only are the buttons no longer there, they added snaps, they put a zipper, a big heavy duty zipper. They still had the four pockets, but now they're snaps instead of buttons. Let me show you a better example of that. They still had buttons on the sleeves, but they still did not have a hood. There, there was a detachable hood. So that's the M1951, but this was the first jacket they started using the term OG107. OG, olive green. Uh, 107 is that shade of olive green. And, and like I said, 1951, and it was worn from 1951 to 1965. Then came out the M1965 field jacket. The M1965 field jacket was issued from 1965 to 2005 when uh, they changed and went to the digital and the whole uniform structure changed altogether. In my opinion, it got pretty ugly. M1965, now the difference between the M1965 and let's say the M1951 is the zipper, the snaps, the four pocket with snaps, and the sleeves now have what's known as hook pile tape. Yes, we most of us call it Velcro, but Velcro is a brand name. Uh, just a little tip, if you're gonna list something online on eBay or what have you, don't use the term <laughs> Velcro. Uh, the Velcro company doesn't like it, they'll It'll give you a Vero and you have to change it. So the proper name for this is hook pile tape, the pile on one side, the hook on the other. And yeah, just call it hook pile tape, unless you can get away with it. But every time I've ever used Velcro in a title or description, uh, I usually always get a Vero or a warning from the company to not utilize their name. So I just call it hook pile tape instead of Velcro and you're good to go. So Velcro on the sleeves, snaps, zipper, it says M1965 right there. And if you look under the collar, you now have that hidden uh, hood that's inside of it. So you don't have that detachable, reattachable hood. It's hidden inside of the collar itself. And of course, we all like those quilted liners. You could put that quilted liner and put it inside. It has the buttons for that. So that is your ubiquitous M1965 fuel jacket. Not only did it come in that OG 107, it also came in, now I don't have uh, the fuel jacket in the woodland camouflage pattern, but I have this uniform and wanted to show you. So it came in the woodland camouflage pattern. Came in the desert pattern, like this uniform here. And it even came out in another uh, desert uh, uh, camouflage uniform that we call the chocolate chips, uh, which is was used uh, over in Egypt, and of course used during Desert Shield, Desert Storm. But that's basically the field jackets. I have a few, few other honorable mentions. This is a U.S. Navy deck jacket. It has buttons in the front and usually have some identifying thing on the back. Uh, so you could look at them and know what their jab, a job is up on the deck of the aircraft carrier, that type of a thing. Here's an interesting one. This is a United States Air Force issued field jacket with these big, high, funky looking collars. I guess to put up around you and button when you're, it's all windy on the tarmac and you're getting in your aircraft, I don't know. It has a hidden pocket. This was, this is from a Vietnam era, early 60s. 
pretty interesting. And my last, this is 1950s or late 40s, early 50s, woman's field jacket, woman's coat. They actually had them divided up between the sexes at one time, but they, they corrected that eventually. But pretty interesting, has buttons down the front, uh, button sleeves. I think it's pretty cool. So that is your basic rundown of field jackets. All of those are available except for that one, I think uh, one large, it's in my size. I think I'm gonna have to keep that one for, your, uh, for myself. But until next time, we'll talk to you soon and uh, keep an eye out for field jackets. They're pretty interesting. See you later.